engage with people through my artwork and I invite people to look at my website and to ask me any questions that they'd like to about a specific piece of work or a technique or something that they've seen there. Just anything that they'd like to know more about. Recently somebody asked me about this particular painting here which is called Tower 2. And they said that they would like to know more about the story behind it and why I painted it. And it would be impossible to talk about Tower 2 without talking about Tower 1 and Tower 3 at the same time because although they're separate canvases they kind of form the same piece of artwork. They all have the same kind of story to them. Now Tower 2 was quite a good one to ask about really because with this sequence of paintings there's a reasonable backstory that we have to cover if we're going to talk about why I painted them and to begin this story we have to go back to 1760 and the birth of the notorious writer and art collector William Beckford. William Beckford was born the son of a sugar plantation owner who was a very very wealthy man. At the age of 10 William Beckford's father died and he inherited, making him one of the wealthiest men in England at a very, very young age. His mother was very protective of him. He was something of a child genius, a real kind of protege with his writing and his music. Um, and his mother kept him quite isolated from other children um, to protect him from the kind of illnesses that were around at the time and things like that. So he had quite a lonely and isolated childhood. When he's about 19 years old, William Beckford meets his cousin, William Courtney, who's then 10 years old, and he falls hopelessly in love with him. It's not until around three years later, when William Courtney's 13, that their relationship becomes more serious and perhaps more physical. Um, William Beckford then has a property in London, and he arranges that William Courtney spends weekends with him when he's not in school. Um, despite this, William Courtney's parents don't become at all suspicious that there's anything untoward in their relationship until another three years down the line when William Courtney's 16. William Beckford's staying with them at their family home and another house guest overhears a lover's quarrel between the two young men and on going to see what the disturbance is catches them in a compromising situation. When this happened William Courtney's uncle was outraged and he made the affair known, he made it public, he intercepted letters between Beckford and Courtney and publicised them, which caused William Beckford, who was then married, to have to flee the country in shame and exile. So he and his young wife left and lived in Europe for quite some time. William Courtney, who was then 16, didn't seem to learn much of a lesson from this little experience and he carried on living at Powderham Castle for the next 25 years, where his behaviour became no more discreet or careful. Eventually he'd attracted significant attention from a local magistrate who had enough evidence to bring him to trial. Um, and of course at the time same-sex relationships were not legal. Um, he would, could have actually been executed um, on the evidence that the judge had that he was having relationships with other men. William Courtney then fled the country. Um, under an assumed name he went over to America to the Hudson River where he owned property. He later moved to Paris where he died in 1835. It's probably worth just thinking at this point that we look at Beckford and Courtney's relationship through very 21st century eyes and we have our 21st century morals and values when we're looking at this. Of course there's no way to justify having a sexual relationship with your 13 year old cousin but the issue for society at the time was less to do with William Courtney's age and far more to do with the fact that it was a same-sex relationship. It's worth remembering that Marie Antoinette was married to the King of France when she was just 15 years old, so values around age and what age it was appropriate for people to marry or to be in relationships were very different from what they are now. The social issue, the thing that caused outrage, the thing that caused both men to leave the country in disgrace, the thing that caused William Courtney to be in genuine fear for his life was the fact that he had relationships with people of the same sex as himself. When Beckford fled the country with his wife, they lived in Europe. She had two daughters with him um, and sadly died shortly after the birth of the second child. 
Beckford did return to England in his lifetime, although he was effectively a social outcast from good society because of his behaviour. His irresponsibility with money led him to actually become almost bankrupt at one point and then he had to start selling off his art collection. Um, he did that, built up his finances again um, and eventually moved to Bath and settled there, um, living on Lansdowne Crescent. While he was there he built a structure called Lansdowne Tower which is now referred to as Beckford's Tower. He used to ride up from his house on the Crescent every day to the tower, he'd go up to the top of the tower and he'd look out at his magnificent view. He's buried just outside the tower um, at Bath and the tower itself is now half a museum to William Beckford's life and works and his collection and the other half of the building is owned by the Landmark Trust um, and you can stay there, um, sort of like a self-catering holiday apartment. We stayed at the tower in October of 2011 and while we were there I read a lot about William Beckford's life and as I spent time there and, and learnt more about him I found myself developing this overwhelming empathy for William Courtney um, in many of the books and in the writing in the museum they almost seem to try to brush over Beckford's relationship with Courtney and they they sort of make him into almost a footnote in William Beckford's illustrious life and I felt that this was quite unfair because he was clearly very very significant I mean there's evidence that Beckford was still talking about his relationship with Courtney into the later years of his life and I just felt such a resonance with this kind of voiceless boy in the shadows who was being brushed aside despite being so enormously significant and so the tower sequence of paintings are a kind of a, an imagined visit of perhaps the spirit, perhaps the ghost of William Courtney coming back and visiting this tower that his ex-lover had created. William Courtney would never have in reality seen the tower, it was completed only a couple of years before his death, um, he was in France at the time. Um, so it's a completely fictional circumstance that he would have visited this place, but that was kind of what the, what the pictures were depicting. And what happens in the sequence is we start off sort of near the base of the tower in this picture, and he's, he's a grown-up man here as he's walking up the tower. Tower 2 is part way up the tower, and he's regressing in age as he walks up to the top of the tower. Um, he's sort of a, a young adolescent, maybe around kind of 16 year old age here. And then in the final picture from the tower sequence he's regressed back to boyhood. So in order to do these paintings I used a couple of different techniques and I used photography because we were only at the tower for a limited amount of time so I needed to photograph the, um, the internal details of the tower and I needed to also to photograph a figure within that space so actually I posed for all of these photos myself um, because it's, it's simply the easiest way to do it it gave me a reference for the space that a figure would take up from the photographs I was then able to make sketches and, and this allowed me then to change the details of the face and make the clothing look more appropriate and that kind of thing and from that I was able to work them into the paintings in order to create them with any kind of realism I needed to have some kind of visual references for what William Courtney looked like so once I was back home from visiting the tower I was researching on the internet trying to find some visuals about him and it was far far easier to find things that related to William Beckford than it was that related to William Courtney um, I did manage to find a couple of references, a couple of portraits by artists that I was really enthusiastic about anyway. Richard Cosway had painted a number of pictures of William Courtney, one huge full life sized full figure picture which hangs in Powder and Castle which was Courtney's family home. Um, this was quite useful in informing the picture where he's um, a fully grown man um, in terms of things like the clothes that he was wearing and the, the sort of hairstyle that he had. And there was also a miniature which was painted by Richard Cosway as well, which was perhaps even him as an even older man, so that was useful as well. 
um, in kind of informing facial features and trying to get some kind of continuity between the three figures. Um, this middle one and the top one was slightly more difficult because I was looking for pictures of him in his youth. Now I'd seen one reproduced in the museum and in some of the books that I'd been reading um, which I managed to track down eventually. It's a painting by George Romney and it was very very difficult to find, in fact it was impossible to find a, a really good picture of this on the internet. By searching and googling I managed to track it down and it's over at a manor house in America um, and I wondered whether perhaps it had left the country when William Courtney left. Um, but I emailed them and they very kindly agreed to photograph the painting for me and send me um, the JPEG images of that which was incredibly helpful. Um, I didn't actually have this, I hadn't managed to find it at the time that I painted these pictures. So I did these almost essentially from memory, from the memory of the very small pictures that I'd seen, but it didn't matter too much because these are kind of more about the feel of, of the picture rather than necessarily being massively accurate. But because they're quite small paintings, they're quite stylized, they're quite illustrative, they've got a kind of children's storybook quality to them. They didn't need to be as massively detailed as perhaps one of my more formal portraits, so it didn't matter that I was working more from a memory and an essence of something. But it was wonderful to receive the JPEG images and be able to have a proper look at the fantastic painting by Romney because I really like Romney's work and I think this is a fantastic example of, of everything that Romney does well. Um, and I then was able to work from that. There's a study on my website called Kitty with Glitter. Kitty was William Courtney's nickname that Beckford I think had given to him. So. Um, I did a, a, a detailed study of the face once I had that to work from, really just to kind of satisfy my desire to work from that piece. So yeah, Tower 2 is the one that was originally asked about and I think it's one that people have responded really positively to and I think because there's something quite relatable about it, I think that a lot of people feel quite drawn to this kind of troubled, furtive looking child on the on the stairs who looks like they're kind of waiting for something or perhaps hiding from something. Um, it's quite ambiguous, the, the figure itself is quite androgynous, it's very kind of relatable to, to whoever views it. I think perhaps people wonder whether I painted it and it's very personal to me, is it depicting me as a child? Um, is it to do with some kind of dark secrets from my past? And I think I like art to be open to interpretation and I think if, if you look at this painting and, and you see something of yourself in that then then that's great because really it's, it's a piece of work that for me it is personal but it was motivated by empathy and I think that because of that it's nice to think that it's something that other people can relate their own story to as well as the actual story that was behind it when I created it.